Hi guys! Welcome back or thanks for stopping by for the first time. I am making yours truly. Okay, the season is upon us. Probably not the season you think, but the year has passed its halfway point and it is the season of predicting interior design trends for the coming year 2025. Now, there is only one thing I hate more than interior design rules and that is interior design trends. You probably are starting to get the gist of where this video is going. I promise not to get riled up. I will try to keep my composure. Look, look, look. I have wine. Hmm. Let's get started. Where should I start? I stress that interior design is number one, personal, and number two, curated over time. Our taste and likes change, and sometimes it takes time to slide into that comfort zone. You know, that perfect design style for us. Once that beloved comfort niche is found, maybe because of financial limits, as well as the search for those last perfect pieces, it has taken time to complete your look. So who the heck has the right to come into your home and then declare what is now out or what you need to change after you have invested all that time and coin? I. As an interior designer myself, could never fathom bursting a client's bubble like that. It is very rare that a client says, oh, I hate everything, everything must go, you have free range. Most know the direction in which they are going and have basically gotten very close to it, but need that last little professional guidance plus my extensive resources and time to search, find, and arrange uh, that they may not have. Yes, they are very often design situations or wishes that um, I don't necessarily understand or agree with, but that is not my home. My job is to please the homeowner. Let someone tell me modern glamour is out. Oh, those are fighting words. I have found my desired comfort style. I will live the rest of my life and die in a 20th century glamour styled home, maybe with minor modifications here or there. Or tell me gallery walls are no longer the trend, simple one artwork walls. Oh, the gloves are on and the earrings are off, okay? You guys, I am going to break down meaningful evolvements in interior design compared to ridiculous. And I know I am probably alienating myself from other designers, but I have to be honest. I am honest. I am going to break down the BS cash grabs disguised as new trends. This is the ultimate anti-trend trend video. D bunking it all. Let's at least start with some positive trends, but still a little BS. Eco-friendliness slash sustainable decor. This is not a trend. This is simply the evolution of societal consciousness on every aspect. My grandparents, like most people's grandparents and parents and many others in that older generation, when they bought something new or when they purchased something new, they just threw out the old that landed on some garbage heap. It did not consciously register in their heads what happened to the old stuff. Landfills were out of sight, out of mind. Um, they never thought of how much they were contributing to waste and the energy needed to produce the new things. Cycling was not a thing then. I was old enough to remember when they first implemented a deposit on those large Coca-Cola bottles and people started returning empty ones 
you know, to the grocery store. But there has always been people that buy vintage, antique, or reclaimed objects to decorate their homes. The U.S., the United States, is not that old. And during the Gilded Age, when many families had an exuberant amount of money and built those large mansions. The trend then was to buy architectural structures from European mansions, castles, and churches to incorporate in their homes, reclaiming a piece of the old world. Now, of course, sustainability was not what drove them, more like financial bragging rights and to outdo the last high society mansion built. But still, they were reusing and repurposing materials instead of producing new. Look, my fireplace, I did the same, comes from a 150, 160 year old villa, no new marble, had to be dug up or carved for my fireplace. Part of the sustainability trend is also using waste materials to produce new objects, which I find great, but not a trend. And this is where I call BS, and it is a cash grab. Pushing this trend on people is basically a form of societal shaming. There are some people, and will always be people, who just feel more comfortable that their sofa or bed or whatever is new and made from new material. You guys, just live and let live. But let's say you let yourself be influenced by this sustainability trend and go buy all this new furniture and decor made from recycled material. Okay, what happens to the things you are replacing? Defeats the purpose if you are still throwing things out. I truly believe in giving something old a new life. And I do hope that more people will start to be more conscious about waste and consumption. But just like our generation is better than the last, the next will be even better than us. This is not a trend, just evolution. If you see it as a trend and off to something new every couple of years, sorry, then you are part of the problem. The next new trend is textured materials. Again, nothing new. This is only for the ones who let themselves be influenced by those early YouTube influencers, mainly those beauty gurus and their glam style of 2010s. You know that style I despise. Only shiny surfaces, shiny bling bling, crystal beading, reflective glass, smooth satiny fabrics, all chrome or all gold, no happy medium or mixture, all white or light gray and no other colors. And they realized how cold and one dimensional it was. Not cozy at all. Don't forget our world changed a lot starting in 2020 and people were confined to their home. They suddenly realized the decor was great for Instagram pics but not for comfortable living. Perfect interior design has always been a good mixture, balance and counterbalance of materials. You have a slick, more shiny surface here. Then you should have a duller surface like wood than there. Slick, satin-like curtains, okay? Then a rougher mohair fabric sofa in front of the curtains. I love a mirrored, piece of furniture very much, but you can't overdo it. My large mirrored piece here has wood accents to warm it up because the mirrored pieces can work a little cold. One crystal chandelier in the room, not all of the lighting fixtures, because they design in the extremes of one trend, Jumping on that influencer bandwagon, now the industry can cash in on them having to correct everything. My advice has always been, if you do like something from the newest look, work in small amounts of the aspects, work them in slowly. That way, when your tastes change, you are not having to break the bank to change everything again. That is what these trendsetters are feeding off of. They know there are people that will be influenced to change everything. So in a couple of years, they need to drastically change everything again.
Now statement ceilings are supposed to be a new trend. Uh, seriously? New? That they are trying to sell this off as new. Hello, people have eyes, okay? They've seen pictures and 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 historical designs of buildings even up to the last 10 years. Since the dawn of architecture, ceilings have been painted, coffered, gilded and chromed, decorated with chrome molding or full ceiling molding and rosettes, covered in wood paneling or decorative metal panels, draped in fabric and wallpaper. And in the 1970s, people were even putting mirrors on their ceilings and that glam, those glam uh, uh, Instagram girls, they were putting silver foil on their ceilings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I have always considered the ceiling as the fifth wall and needs to be considered in the room's design. But please do not think you have to now throw something up on your ceiling because some Johnny come lately's to the idea of ceiling design are saying so. The ceiling design has to fit with the whole room design and architectural design of the home cohesively. Sometimes just giving your ceiling a fresh coat of white or cream paint to make it, make it and your uh, wall color pop again is all you need. Again, the ones that copied that overly done, modern and contemporary simple look are now looking for some balance and more character in their space. Their rooms were just simply too plain. Okay, I need a sip of wine for this next one because I just don't get it. They say maximalism is the new trend for 2025, huh? In my world and in the world of millions, maximalism never went anywhere. See, the problem is you all listened to that Maria Kondo lady and threw all your stuff out. Now you were missing it. Not every decor piece in your house is going to always give you joy all the time. If it's not working right now, pack it away. Maybe in a couple of months, you find something that works perfectly with that piece and you rearrange the vignette new. Move a piece of art from another room. Now that extra lamp in the foyer would top off the new arrangement perfectly. Your home is curated over time, remember? And your curations can always be switched up and reimagined. The only time I get rid of something is when I have had something packed away in my cellar for you know, a year or a year and a half and I have absolutely not thought about it or missed it. Then I know it doesn't need to be in my apartment. I wish people would just finally accept that we are beings that need to collect. We have hobbies, interests and likes, memories and photos. We need objects around us. Again, this is the case of doing something in the extremes and having to correct it now. The next BS new trend and connected a little bit to maximalism and collecting items is this so-called global influences uh, slash diverse cultural decor design. Now they are just grabbing for straws. We spoke earlier in this video about the rich people of the Gilded Age bringing artifacts from Europe, creating homes influenced from the old world. Definitely places they visited while traveling. I preach till I am blue in the face to try and travel and bring decor items back from your travels and to incorporate other cultural aspects in your home. Personal memories. This is nothing new. As past cultures started traveling and trading, artifacts were brought back home from far lands. We would not have tulips and porcelain if it was not for the Dutch trading ships that sailed to Asia in the 1600s. 
bohemian culture from the 19th century and revival, its revival in the 1970s and the present is totally influenced from art and artifacts of other worlds. French chinoiserie style, French Moroccan and Algerian and East Indian influences in British decor are not just from trading, but also unfortunately from colonization. Other cultural influences have always piqued our interest because they are so different from what we know. Okay, now trying to keep up with this trend, people will be coerced to take the easy and quick way. They won't travel, but instead just buy that mass-produced Buddha statue or the copy Moroccan rug that never saw Morocco or Chinese vases, probably made in China, but in some factory with a million others. Nothing authentic, nothing has a story, history, or memory. No personal touch. And in a couple of years, they're probably just going to throw it out. Another sip of wine because the next trend is just utterly ridiculous. Okay, listen up. The next trend is retro touches. I know all of you who have been decorating the last 20 to 30 years in mid-century modern or mid-century vintage, as I like to call it, are laughing your behinds off. I am starting really to believe the trends in the last 15 years are the result of age and social media. The young people that are being exposed to things by seeing them for the first time on Instagram, etc., etc. Things that have been around for ages and even strong in the last years find a new audience each year and then are deemed new. For example, the resurgence of 1970s sofas, Togo, uh, uh, the Camelionda, uh, the Soriana, postmodern pieces. I had here recently a video about Kelly Wurstler's style. Since 1995, since she founded her design company, she has decorated and, and, and created a modern glamour style heavily influenced in 1960s and 70s plus po postmodern pieces. Nothing new. Watch, I guarantee there will be an increased buying of cheap replicas of these retro pieces next year just for the bragging rights to post on social media to be considered in trend. If you have always been a collector, then you have acquired valuable, authentic pieces over time. For you, it is cherished and not trendy. Okay, the next trend, nothing new and a cash grab, Biophilic design. Biophilic design is the incorporation of nature, i.e. plants and greenery in your decor. Must I again refer to 19th century bohemian style, which also infused exotic large plants indoors? Victorian sunrooms were another example. Large palm trees of the Art Deco and old Hollywood glamour. If you grew up in the 1970s, like me, Every other weekend, <laughs> you were helping your mother macrame a new plant hanger to hang yet another airplane plant. Remember the smaller baby parts that would grow from the plant and your mother would cut it off and give it to a friend to put in water to uh, propagate and grow another plant? They were the shared sourdough starters of its time. There has always been that one neighbor that had a ton of plants and we saw her as the crazy lady always talking to her plants. In modern times, people were less at home, working, traveling, and you need to be present and have the time to care for all those plants. I am a person that does not do well with plants, okay? Never have. I have, not having any clue how, one aloe vera plant that is striving and I uh, propagated um, and tried to grow a hanging pearl plant. I'll show you here what a healthy one looks like because my poor plant, she does not have enough pearls on her left to clutch. Again, due to the world circumstances starting in 2020, more people were home and afterwards working more from home, less traveling for work. So they had the time to dedicate to plants. 
plus a desire for a healthier environment was suddenly an important concern. Plants give off needed oxygen and healthier breathing air. But is this a new trend or just a conscious evolution due to life circumstances? People who have no knowledge of plants or do not have a green thumb are running out purchasing these expensive trees and plants that they see every influencer has, the fiddle leaf, blah, 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 and other fig trees, plus a huge overpriced plant pot from Olive Ateliers. Okay, look, Olive Ateliers has caught a stray bullet. I didn't mean that. But then within four months for this plant to die, the plant nurseries are laughing all the way to the bank. Or a complete wall of hanging plants. Just wait until you get a colony of bugs living in there that you can't get rid of. Plants are not for everyone. Just like pets or even children. The last two are the ultimate BS trends. Soft minimalism. Okay, that is just organic modern, which has been around for a while and they have rewrapped it in a different color paper, put a new bow on it and trying to sell you as something new. Organic modern evolved after the revival of postmodern. The yearning for more rounded, playful forms. Then as the bold, vibrant colors of postmodern were tiring out, people wanted more calming, cozy living spaces. Now, if you have found that organic modern is your beloved style and you have been saving for that perfect sofa, good news for you. You can get it now for cheaper or in very good secondhand condition because you know someone will be wanting to get rid of one. They have to get the new soft minimalist sofa. It's a cash grab, don't fall for it. And lastly, people are supposedly seeking furniture and decor that is more adaptable to the needs and functions of their lifestyle, allowing more flexibility. Hmm, where have you heard that before? Anyone that has lived in a small New York, Paris, London, or just about anywhere else, small apartment or smaller house knows this is not a trend, but survival. Yours truly here has always told you, choose your pieces, not only for the aesthetics, but also for the functionality. Some pieces may have to provide for more than one function. The dining table, that is also the workspace. Why do you think they invented sleeper sofas, futons, and Murphy beds? Also in modern open concept design. You have the open kitchen, the family room, the dining area there, but only space for one case piece. That case piece must have room for table linens, maybe extra throws for the sofa, candles, toys for the kids. Unless they have invented some transformer like sofa that you push a button and it transforms into some full <laughs> dining set. I do not understand this trend. This is just common sense. And I refuse to waste time on color trends of the year. Like I said, go look in your closet. If the color is not there and you don't like wearing that color, it has not, it does not have a place in your home. Make that short and sweet. In closing, basically, my message is to you. Find that personal style for you, what fits to your personality best and where you feel most comfortable, and then stand 10 toes down in it. Then these trends cannot sway you. Be unique. If you like something new, integrate only small portions of the look into your style without losing the base design style. Don't design in one extreme or another. Mixture, dimension, and variation 
are the main keys to a cozy, elegant, balanced home. And no trend is ever new. Maybe just lay off interior design social media around this season every year and just ignore the trends. Okay guys, I would love to hear all your opinions down in the comment section. Let's get this conversation started. Thank you so much for stopping by. And as always, yours truly, Heart Macon. Ciao. I've chuckled and chuckled myself up that I burped on camera. Okay. Ooh, now my wig is moved. Okay. <laughs>